Hi, so today we're going to talk about measuring or assessing and setting up a client to, um, to look at their electrocardiogram or an ECG. You might have heard it called an EKG as well. It's the same idea. This is becoming more and more important for personal trainers to have a basic understanding at least of what this measurement is. The clientele that we are dealing with today is a lot different from the clientele that we've dealt with you know, a decade or two decades ago. More of our clients that we work with, they're, they're older, and more of them have had heart attacks in the past or have cardiovascular disease. So have a base, having a basic understanding of this measurement is, is pretty important. Where you would do this type of measurement at would be a place um, working in any sort of clinical setting, if you want to be a clinical exercise physiologist, any laboratory setting, um, a lot of different doctor's offices, even places where they measure athletes, VO2 max, will often hook an athlete up to an EKG to make sure that their heart is functioning the way that, it, the way that they should. What an ECG is, is it's measuring the electrical activity of the heart. The heart is pumping and contracting based off of electrical currents. Those currents should be you know, functioning within the, topper, the proper time frames. And if they're not, then something is going on with the heart. Today we're just going to talk about how to prep a client to, to have their ECG measured. So here I have a skeleton, and you, you notice that I have 10 blue stickers on the skeleton. Those stickers represent electrodes that you would place on the client. I put it on the skeleton because this is a lot easier to see where you would place the electrodes. Now, there's 10 electrodes on this skeleton, which actually allow for 12 different images of the heart. So when, when all is said and done, the cardiologist or the doctor, whoever it will end up assessing the client, will have 12 different pictures of the heart based off of these 10 electrodes. I'm going to briefly talk about where these electrodes go. So you have the limb leads. Okay, they're called the limb leads, um, and you don't actually place them on the limb. You place the right one, this is called the right arm, it's right under the clavicle. The left one, called the left arm, is right under the left clavicle. So those are your two arm leads. Then you have the leg leads. The skeleton doesn't have a belly here, uh, but really this goes right above the, the belly button. To the right of it would be your right leg. Right above the belly button to the left of it would be your left leg. So those are the four limb leads. And then what you're doing is you're really wrapping the heart. Okay, so we, the chest leads, we label them by V. So V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6 are the six chest leads. And it really wraps the heart. You place V1 and V2 in the space in between the bone. That's an important thing to note. If you place an electrode directly on bone, when you go to look at the reading, um, it won't look the way that it should. We call that artifact. It'll, have, it'll be bouncing a lot. So you want to miss bone. So you have um, V1, V2, and the fourth, we call that the intercostal space in between your intercostals. And then you have V3, 4, 5, and 6. It wraps the chest around. Curtis is our, our client today. We have him set up already. Okay, so you'll see his arm leads are up here right under his clavicle. These are his arm leads. Here's his leg leads. His chest lead, you have V1, V2, and then it's really wrapping that heart under the armpit. You have V6, which will allow us, again, to get 12 different pictures of um, the heart. The, it most, one of the most important things to get a good reading on the ECG is client prep. If a client of yours came in or a patient and he had a really hairy chest, it would require you to shave the spots that you're placing the electrodes or you wouldn't get a good image. So first thing, luckily Curtis is shaved, but you would shave the spots where you're going to place the electrodes. And then you'd want to kind of rough the skin up a little bit. Most companies that sell any sort of ECG machine will sell some sort of uh, lubricant that has almost like fine, fine sandpaper that you would put on some gauze and you would rough the skin up a little bit and then you could place the, the electrode on there. So we have Curtis set up. And then over here to uh, next to Curtis, we have the actual readout of the ECG for Curtis. Um, in this read, this is, allows for the assessment of well, heart rate, but also to make sure that when a client is exercising, when a client is at rest, that that heart is functioning the way that it should. 